right. Thank you so much, Carmen, uh, for that uh, news update. MEC, welcome. Thank you so much for visiting us here at Newsroom Africa. Well, thanks, JJ, and uh, thanks for really hosting us. No, wonderful. Man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the, your time because I was serious that, you know, the, uh, first of all, Newsroom Africa is not a regional television station. We're an Definitely. international station <laughs> in 54 countries. <laughs> so we can't keep talking to one MEC of education. We'd like to know what's happening in the rest of the country. But, of course, before then, the tornado, uh, they're shocking the, the world. And, of course, uh, also tonight, the weather report telling us that you guys may be expecting some storms. A little bit of what the government is doing there to intervene? Well, uh, there are interventions uh, that are being uh, <clears throat> made by our government, led by the Premier's office as well as the Department of mm. Cocta. I must also indicate that as Department of Education, we are indeed affected over I the can past... can imagine with the schools, you know, being roofs being blown off and so on. Yeah, in fact, over the past two, two weeks, uh, we were first uh, affected by gusty wind and then past sure. two days, uh, the heavy storms. We have about 81 schools that have been blown off. Sure. And um, yesterday and today, there were learners who could not uh, attend school because, oh, uh, no. you know, KZN is largely rural and uh, there's learners who are still traveling long distances and all of that. And today we were forced basically to cancel uh, the classes because uh, we were But aren't you in the middle of exams, actually? Well, we are, we are, JJ. Yeah. But fortunately, uh, all those who are writing metrics, my metric yeah. exams, uh, we're able to write, uh, although see. we're keeping a close eye on them. We had been in contact with the National Department to say, if things get worse, we'll be forced uh, basically to, to abandon them and try to rearrange uh, another date for them to rewrite yeah. the examination. But I was it's advised later yeah. on that uh, all of them were able to write. So yeah. we'll keep a close eye even tomorrow. But we, we said to parents uh, today that uh, those who are not writing, they must not come because we want to put safety first. Even tomorrow, those who are not writing, we advise them to really uh, stay at home yeah. for, for their safety. It's quite serious, but it triggers another issue. A couple of years ago, uh, almost more than 10 years ago, I was part of some committee that dealt with what is called the schools under trees. And I happened to be in these meetings with, with, the, with the deputy minister of education, then uh, uh, N. And he said something very strange, or it was strange at least when I listened to it first that the issue of schools under trees, right, is a moving target. Which I thought, well, this is interesting, because he's saying, when something like this happens, and you have 81 schools that have been affected, you are back to square one, because last week you may have had no schools under trees, but today you've got 81 schools that actually have no place to study. Is that the, still the situation in case then that you have school, mud schools and schools under trees at all? Um, and, and, and what are you doing? Are, are these schools, if you can just give me a sense of, have they been completely destroyed or is it a question of coming to fit in the roofs and stuff? There are those that have been really completely destroyed. Sure. Uh, some, obviously, few parts of them were affected. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure about uh, the moving target. In case <laughs> that, and, uh, we, yeah. we no longer have uh, schools that... Uh, uh, or learners that are, stand, are studying under trees. Uh, yeah. Although we still, we still do have uh, math schools, schools. Uh, math schools uh, yeah. and uh, that those schools that uh, are dilapidated, context, that isn't? will be dangerous in this context. Yeah. And we are really working hard to eliminate all those schools. We are quite focused, and uh, you will find most of those schools in rural areas. Yeah. And our focus, AJ, uh, since we took over this office, has really yeah. been paying particular attention uh, where it matters most, in rural areas as well as in township, because... Yeah. We, we are informed by uh, the hierarchy of disadvantage suffered by our people, particularly yeah. uh, owing to our past. And uh, we said we want to uplift the standard of education in rural areas as well as in township areas so that learners in rural areas don't have to feel pressure that uh, for them to get better education, they must migrate to Go townships to urban and urban areas. And uh, most of the parents still don't. Uh, schooling in private school and all of that and all of those so we are quite focused in one eliminating all those schools because um, they, 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 they remain a challenge yeah. particularly in so far as access but also our strategic uh, orientation going forward which is informed by basically three, three things which is access quality as well as relevance so with those schools that are still uh, not in good condition you, you can achieve yeah. uh, those three elements which are guiding us going forward. What is your, what is your built program? I mean, uh, in terms of improving school infrastructure, 
what, what can you tell me there? I mean, uh, uh, the Eastern Cape was telling me, uh, I think that last year that they were building one school, uh, uh, almost opening one school a month or something, some extraordinary number like that. What is your own target around building new schools and so on in KZN? Well, we are guided by a budget, uh, JJ. Uh, we have about uh, 2.5 billion that uh, is allocated for infrastructure. Uh, that include uh, building new schools, that include the refurbishing schools uh, that are old and dilapidating, that also include the issue of sanitation, yeah. uh, which uh, we are determined that within two years we should uh, have uh, ridden the province of uh, Petratin's uh, toilets and all of that. So we are not obviously moving at a pace that we would uh, have preferred because of, of, of funding. That's why we are also calling on the private sector to assist us in terms of... Um, uh, uh, give, uh, lending us the hand, uh, yeah. using their resources to either re uh, build new schools or yeah. help to... Are you saying those, those partnerships are not in place? I mean, there's, a, there, 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 there's huge companies that are based in KZN. Yeah. They, they, they are not in place, uh, uh, JJ. Uh, sure. Let me say in a structured way. You will find yeah. uh, one or two saying, no, we're going to donate that, we're going to donate... But there is no proper uh, coordination and structure. Yeah. Of, of, of us partnering with the private sector. And that's what uh, we, are, we are trying to establish now so that there's a clear point of coordination and we know that uh, what is it that they're expecting from us and they know our expectation as, uh, as a department because education... Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Government alone cannot uh, uh, you know, succeed if, if there's no uh, private sector, se sector support. Which brings you to another issue. About, we, we saw in Houghton that there's a, a, almost like a tug of war about access. You mentioned access as one of your big issues, right? And part of what caused that debate on access is uh, precisely what you mentioned earlier about, you know, uh, having such a quality of education across the board that people don't feel the need to go to migrate to the urban centers to, to take, get education. Here you're talking about a big dichotomy of private schools or what used to be model C schools and township schools, etc. Is then a big issue there of war between uh, private schools and how they are resourced, uh, you know, modelist schools and how they are resourced, and then township schools? There, there is that uh, uh, tension, uh, uh, JJ, if I may put it like that, uh, where some within uh, 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 the scope of private schools believe that the, such schools. Uh, even not only private schools, but there are public schools, but which are in urban areas, which are historically advantaged. Yeah. And there are still some people who believe that such schools should continue to be an exclusive reserve uh, of those who can afford. Uh, and that, that stands diametrically opposed to the agenda that we have as a government of opening up doors of learning, yeah. of ensuring that each and every learner uh, receives quality and equal education be it is from the rural areas or, or township or even in, in, in urban areas. That is why we are saying while we fight the badly of, of opening access in these schools, but we must continue to invest more in areas yeah. where uh, uh, our people uh, are residing. Because if we don't do that, JG, we, we, we are, in KZN, we are affected by a, a high level of, of or high rate of migration, yes. which means that uh, we will build a school in, K, in, in a rural area, then people decide to migrate, and that school become non valuable and, and yes, to close. And it can become stand, a white elephant. Yes, yes at the stand, we, 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 we are battling with uh, an issue of closing about 900 schools, which are really closing 900, closing 900 schools. schools, which are basically have become non valuable. Non -viable. There are about 35 learners now in a school and so forth because of migration of people probably yeah. following better economic opportunities and all, of, and all of those things. And that migration also put pressure uh, in other schools where these people migrate to. Now we need to build more new schools while you close other uh, schools as it were. That is why we are saying Good. Yeah. we Good. need to invest more so that people yeah. are able to receive quality education where they reside. That's an interesting uh, uh, issue that, that you raised about possibly having to close the schools. Could that be part of the solution for your 81 schools that have been destroyed? Or this thing doesn't work like that because these are not in the same geographic area that they are scattered all over it the place. It doesn't work like that. They are scattered <laughs> all, all over. Some of those that have been blown yeah. off in particular, in fact, most of them are viable schools with a number of, of, of learners. So I see. we will have no choice but to, to rebuild those schools. All right. I'll, we'll come back to that. I want to talk about the state of education itself.
uh, in, in, in KZN? Is it something that uh, competes well in the other provinces? And, and what's your own feeling about what needs to be improved? You're talking to the MEC of Education in KwaZulu-Natal tonight on our Frank Talk. You can, of course, uh, send us your views on hashtag your view on 405. You can also give us a ring. Also, we'll take throughout the conversation. Let's take a break now.